All right, thank you all for joining us today. We're joined by head coach Rich Schaefer and player Jordan Demery and Justin Carter. Of coach starts with an opening statement. We'll take questions. Well, good afternoon. Um, it's an exciting time. This is an exciting week. Getting ready to go play in a very prestigious event and one that's very difficult to to compete in. Um, 14 tremendous teams, great players, great coaches playing in the Southeastern Conference uh, tournament. And uh, it is a grueling uh, event. Um, whether you're playing five, four, three days in a row, it's, it's very, very hard to do. And uh, uh, the best thing I can tell you is you just focus on one game at a time and uh, don't get caught up in anything else. Um, and uh, we've been fortunate enough to, to where we've been able to do that. I think we've been in five straight finals um, there, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, just, um, you know, our kids have done a great job going into that event, just really being focused. So that's kind of what we'll talk about today is where our minds are, what our distractions are, and just trying to get focused down the stretch here. We've got two two segments of our season left, this, this one going into the weekend and then uh, postseason after that. So proud of my team, as I've said many times. Um, just really excited for them, excited for these two, along with Rakia being on the second team All-SEC team today and uh, Jordan being on the All-Defensive team. Um, just um, know a lot of hard work and commitments going into that. So proud of Jess and her improvement uh, from her freshman to her sophomore year and where she is today. And I think the rest of the league has acknowledged that by um, voting for her and, and awarding her for that. And uh, certainly Jordan was a preseason selection and she lived up to everything and then some that she was supposed to do uh, for us this season. Um, Rakia being on the all freshman team as well as being second team and then um, Jessica and Rakia being uh, the finalists for the Gillum Award, uh, the Gillum Trophy uh, in Jackson next Monday. So uh, just um, proud of everybody. And uh, now, the chance, now the time is, can we get better? We're going to work really hard today on some things that we've got to get better on. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see in the next three days if we can get better going into to Greenville. John, I know Coach made a case for you last year for all SEC defensive, especially. But uh, this year, you got a chance to come back and, and get that honor. What's that mean to you to be represented there on that list with some really good players this year? Um, it means a lot to me. Uh, I was definitely disappointed last season when I uh, when I found out about the awards and everything, but. Um, I'm just thankful and grateful that I, I got the chance to come back this year and then I got the chance to, you know, be on those lists this year. So it means a lot. Just uh, Coach talked about your improvement from last year to this year and now you're on the all SEC team. Just talk about the, the journey and what it's taken to get you to this point in your career and you're still just a sophomore. Mm, a lot of hard work. I mean, I'm still working at it every day, getting better. So. Yeah, and I'm thankful to be on the team. Next question. We'll Jess, we talked to you about sort of that transition into a bigger role this year. What what has that been like for you? And I guess you said you're still working. What do you feel like is the next step for you? Um, well, first of all, it's been hard, like, because Tierra is a really good player. So just trying to fill her shoes, trying to rebound, help my team win, just that's hard. But I'm making it. I'm getting better at it. So I would say. Defensively, I can help my team more, like blocking shots, helping them, and getting more rebounds, working on that part. Jordan, the team came up short trying to win the SEC regular season championship. Does it, does it create some excitement knowing that you can chase a trophy, you know, within the span of three days? Um, yes, definitely. Um, you know, our last tournament in Canada, we didn't come out with the trophy, and then the regular season, we didn't come out with the trophy. So we definitely had something to go out there and play for and to prove, you know, to the country. And we want that. We want that shot. Jordan, kind of going off of that, obviously the ultimate goal is to be the last team standing at the very end of the season. But you kind of got this uh, SEC tournament, you know, between then and now, or between now and then. Having won it last year, knowing what it feels like to win it, uh, holding that trophy up in Greenville, 
Now, how much motivation is that to do it again, especially considering this is your last chance to try to do that? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of motivation. I definitely want to go out there, you know, take it game by game. Um, instead of just looking to that Sunday game, we, you know, we got to handle our business Friday. But just that feeling of, you know, having the confetti fall on your, on your head and playing, on it, playing in it and, you know, just celebrating with your team, knowing all the hard work we done put in over the years, it's, it's a moment that I'm looking forward to. Joe, kind of that a little bit. I mean, you guys have all played in tournaments where you play back to back days, and obviously even in the pre earlier in this season. But what do you kind of maybe tell about tell some of the younger players about that and sort of what the what it takes in the SEC tournament? I know obviously it's a way to step up the competition or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, like you said, we've already experienced those back to back games before, and I think. Um, with Canada, we had another game before that, so it was really like four games back to back. So, you know, just kind of to prepare them mentally and physically, just, you know, preaching to them that we had to take care of our bodies. You know, we got to get a lot of rest and, and eat right. And that's things that coach has been telling us all through the season. So, um, you know, just like I said, taking it game by game and not really looking towards the championship, but just starting with that first game to handle our business. I know you've played both the teams that you could potentially play um, already this season, but um, things can change, especially for LSU, you know, losing one of the top players. At this point in the season, do you focus more on your team or do uh, do you scout both teams the same? Or what, what's kind of your approach going into it? Yeah, absolutely. I think both teams are completely different than when we played them. Um, Florida is much different than the first game of the – conference season when we played them back on January 1st or 2nd. Uh, LSU is different, but Nikki's done a tremendous job. They are they are really playing at a high level, you know, without Ayana. And just, you know, you got to take your hat off to both those coaches. They have made their teams better. They're playing at a very high level. They both have difference players, um, multiple on their team. And so, you know, they equally will have our attention this week and as we practice today, tomorrow, and Thursday. We'll watch them play Thursday night. And then you got to shoot around basically in one film, maybe two film sessions before you play them on Friday night. So it's a quick turnaround. But as Jordan said, you know, we, we played Marquette on our way to Canada and we played three straight in Canada. And, and we do that for a reason, for this particular reason, and that – you may have to play, you know, you're going to have to play three straight here. So, um, you know, in regards to LSU and Florida, that, you know, they'll equally weigh in our attention. We've already been breaking down film on them. Johnny was watching it on the bus ride home the other night, you know, from, from uh, Mississippi. I mean, I, I think there's so much that's going to happen between now and that day when everything is selected. Um, you know, I think we can, we can certainly, I think we can improve our spot. Um, uh, I just glanced at it, to be honest with you. I, I couldn't tell you the teams in front of us or behind us, but, um, you know, it's, it's just something that I think it's more for the fans than it is for – you know, my attention, uh, I'm focused on our team, trying to get them better, really trying to keep their head out of something like that, to be honest with you. with Sometimes with a young team, it's what you don't, you know, you're better off not knowing certain things, but then sometimes, you know, uh, you know you're know, you trying to teach them and you want them to gather some information, but that isn't one of them. And so I just, I just kind of really just kind of focus with them on we got to get better today. We've never won before, given everything that you know y'all have done to them, Final Fours, all that stuff. You've never won the SEC tournament, and, and then you won it. So going into this year, you know, what's the message? How do you get your team motivated to to maybe repeat and, and do that again? Well, I think you know there's a there's a standard around here that we've set and we've established. Uh, like I mentioned, I think we've been in five straight Sunday games now. 
you better not look past Friday or it'll jump up and grab you. And, uh, but you know, for, for our kids, for our returners, they understand it for our newbies. I want them to, to feel the importance of this. This is the standard around here, but to do that, we're going to have to go through some really good teams. And, um, I just think you've got to focus on Friday and Friday only. You do what I did in college and you cram overnight for an exam on Saturday and then you do it again on Saturday night if you, you're know, fortunate enough to play on Sunday. And that's that's the approach. We've got a lot of time to focus on Friday and I think that's where our focus will be. And, um, and, and so, uh, you know, for our team, uh, you know, hey, our youth, you know, I don't think they'll be nervous, but – you know, you never know going out there in a big arena with the big lights. So I'll be excited to see them play on Friday night. Fresh, fresh off a test. How's <laughs> exciting for you to be a freshman and be an All SEC All Freshman team, and then also being a Gillum Trophy finalist? Um, I'm very. Happy to have those under my belt. Uh, you know, I feel as though, you know, I'm just happy, I guess. I don't know. Obviously, when you chose to come here, you knew that some accolades like this would be possible given you know, everything that Nick has done with his players. But now that you, you've got those accolades and maybe some, some postseason, um, awards and, and trophies coming too. You know, how good does it feel to, to have made that decision to come to Mississippi State? And I mean, you still got three years of this potential as well. Yeah, uh, it feels really good that I followed my heart and didn't listen to what like outsiders were saying. You know, <clears throat> when making my decision, people were just saying like, Mississippi as the state, like, I don't think you will like it there. It's always hot, there's always bugs. You're not gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I took my visit and I actually fell in love with it. So um, it feels really good to know that my my gut feeling's right. Ricky, how are you feeling physically? I'm I'm sure Sunday you were kind of on the back end of that uh, illness. Mm -hmm. uh, what where are you right now going in the tournament? Um, you can still hear my voice. <laughs> my voice is kind of coming back now, but um, just low on energy. You know, I'm trying to get it back, but I, I should be fine. Thank you for asking. From a basketball standpoint, obviously those first couple games were, were kind of rough trying to get used to the college game, but you, you kind of you know broke out and have been a 20-point-a-night player in conference particularly. How, does it, how good does that feel to you know kind of jump right into the college game and do some of the same stuff that you were doing in high school as a really prolific player too? Um, just seeing the things that we do in practice pay off. We just go through so many drills and so many game situations that it helps me in the game. And, it builds my confidence uh, and know that my teammates trust me to get the ball. My coach put me in positions to be successful. So, okay, whether it's earlier this year in Canada or AAU or whatever it is, I'm sure you played plenty of these tournaments, whether it's, you know, day to day or two games in a day. I mean, is there anything different about that challenge? Or, I mean, are you, you guys feel like you're pretty much prepared, even though, you know, you guys do have a big young group this year. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're, um, we're pretty much prepared. It, just, it kind of reminds me of AAU, like how we're going down there and no school. So that's always good. <laughs> 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 we still have study hall on the road, though. But, you know, just bonding more with my teammates, I feel like it's going to be pretty cool and a pretty cool experience because, you know, I've never been to something like this in college. So. Thank you. Hot and bugs, huh? <laughs> Coach, not comparable as far as minutes and their role on the team with Jessica and Tierra, but the, the, the production, Jessica's far ahead of where Tierra was. How high do you feel like her ceiling is? How much more can you get out of her? I know you, you mentioned wanting to play her at the four or some, but mm -hmm. she's had to be at that position and fill some pretty big shoes, and that I know that was probably tough for her to do. Um, just how much further do you feel like she could go? Well, I, I think she can – I think she's got a long way to go. I just – I think she's she's a little more versatile than Tierra, and 
Um, you know, I, I say this all the time as a compliment to, to Jess, but she's, you know, she, she does some things like Asia did when I saw Asia as a, as a young player and then watched her grow up and mature into the dominant player that she was. And, and so, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm hopeful, and again, you all have heard me say this, the most improvement you typically make as a player is between your freshman and sophomore year. Jessica's a prime example of that. The challenge is now, can we make the same jump next year through this this summer? And And I don't know, but we're going to try. I can't – you can't put a value – on how uh, this summer, how much last summer benefited, we benefited from from that, uh, especially with these young kids. It wasn't your typical, let's go over there and play three or four games and tour the country and kick everybody by 80 and it, kumbaya, everybody feels good about each other. We, we were over there competing against some really good teams um, and we're in some really tight ball games and – I think we we obviously benefited from that experience back in June. So um, we obviously won't have that to fall back on this summer. But um, you know, I think that really kind of catapulted this this young team a little bit and, and really provided us an opportunity that you typically don't have. Vic, uh, going back to Tyler's question a little bit about the message going into the SEC tournament, and same thing last year, you were able to break through and win the tournament last year. Was there anything, obviously the groups are different this year in terms yeah. of players, but was there anything you and your coaching staff learned through that period to get over that hump? Or, you know, is there anything that you go into this tournament saying, well, this worked last year, let's use the same approach this year? Sure. So our itineraries are the same, um, but they have been for the last five Um I think last year's group was really hungry to to get over the top. They knew they had an opportunity to do something that's never been done, and um, and we were talented. I mean, let's face it, we were really, really talented with a senior-laden team that, that was hungry to get it done, and we were playing well. And, uh, you know, this year's team is obviously equally – they're very talented. We just run into stretches sometimes where we we look young. You know, but the message will be the same. This is another opportunity. We 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 talk about it during the course of preseason, where we lay, hey, you got a chance to win X number of championships throughout the course of the season. I think we had one in Canada, we had one in Vegas, we had a regular season championship. You got an SEC tournament championship. You'll then have a chance to win a regional championship, and then you'll have a chance to win a national championship. So that's seven championships in the course of a season. You have a chance to win. And um, and so we we won one, uh, and we've missed out on two others. And so this will be the fourth one. And so um, you know that's what you talk about. And uh, again, that's kind of when we we came here and when we're recruiting, we talk about winning championships. And um, so this is another opportunity. But man, I'm, I'm telling you, th this tournament in and of itself is. Is so difficult. You're, you're playing so many great teams back to back, great coaches, tremendous players. It's as it's every bit as difficult as the tournament that follows after it. If you can get through the gauntlet of the SEC, you can win anything. And you know that's what this next tournament will hold is is a three day gauntlet. If you're fortunate enough to play all three days, but again, you start looking ahead, you'll be packing up and coming home Saturday morning. Because we talked all year about how young this team is, but when you have a freshman and a sophomore on the All SEC team, and they're both finalists for the Gillum Trophy, it has to make you feel really good about the progress they've made, and and that you're going to still have them for a little while yet. No question. And you look at you know Aaliyah, what she's done lately, um, Jemiah and 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 uh, Jayla, in their youth. And you still got Zaria, who's just a sophomore. So I mean, we're we're really um, excited about that, and then. You know, that, that three-player recruiting class, which includes Sydney, who's been here for a year, I mean, it's it's exciting to think about how, you know, what the future holds for this group. And, uh, again, um, just just trying to get better. You know, we've got an opportunity, like I said, and um, we, we want to we wanna stay humble and stay hungry. You know, everybody walking around patting you on the back, boy, you start drinking that Kool-Aid and 
it's it's not a good thing. And when you're a little bit older and more mature, you, you have a better understanding of that. When you're young, you can get full of that pretty quick, and it's not good. Going back to the theme of the conference tourney, you talked about playing on Sundays and, and having senior-laden teams in the past. So it was kind of an expectation to get to Sunday. This year's team being so young, uh, do, do you feel like the same expectation is there, or are you really trying to take it day by day and, and you don't know what to expect maybe from your team? Well, I think we are taking it day by day, which we did with the other teams as well. I mean, we really guarded against looking forward. We've always done that. Uh, y'all have heard me in here. Y'all have talked about who we're playing next. I couldn't tell you who we're playing on the next Sunday or next Thursday. But uh, we've, we've, con we've been pretty consistent with that with our players throughout the course of the season. But – I do think, as y'all have seen in, in ball games, we can we can have stretches where we can go on a 24 nothing run or we can have stretches where we can go empty for four or five minutes. And so, um, you know, uh, we're still, um, as y'all know, we're still kind of tinkering with the lineup. And uh, I'm anxious to see them go today and see who wants to compete. And, you know, I think we'll have 12 of them out there competing. They understand it. They see it. And um, so you, you walk into that arena and it's a beautiful place and you just, you know, we play in big arenas every night in the SEC, but that one will have a little different feel for them. And, uh, you know, uh, you'll hope that Joe and, and some of our older kids who have been there and done that will have a little bit of a calming effect for them. And uh, I don't really think it'll be an issue. You know, our kids love to play. So I think they'll be excited to – they may have a little giddiness early, but we'll, we'll get them settled in. Vic, you mentioned the idea of momentum and sort of the tournaments like this can kind of give you some of that. I mean, yep. you won a couple of games to close the season. Uh, you go into the, the SEC tournament ahead, of the, and not to look ahead, but heading into March. How important is it for a team like yours that's young and to, to develop some of that going into the tail end of the season? Obviously, your teams in the past have done that, especially last year with winning the title. Yeah, no, I think it's important. We need to go in there and play well and um, – you know, I think that can really catapult you in, into, you know, the next – what's next. Um, you know, a couple of years ago we lost two of our last three and cost us an SEC title. Then we went to the tournament and we played for the championship, got beat again. Then we came out of the tournament and um, made some pretty significant changes to our lineup and went on a run and got to the Final Four and, and played for the national championship. So – you know, I, I just think there's always room for improvement. There's room for growth. Um, as long as the clock's ticking and there's still time on the clock and there's still time in the season, I just think you – it's always been my philosophy, we're going to continue to work and get better. We're, I've never been a guy that's, well, it's February, we're going to cut back and practice an hour and five minutes today. You know, I, I don't know how you can get better in an hour and five minutes, y'all. I just don't. I can remember when I was at Arkansas, Nolan would come out and the guys would go up and down for about 45, 50 minutes. And it was like an up-tempo game and then boom, that was it. And, and that worked for Nolan and that's great. And it works for a lot of other people. It just, for me, I just can't justify that. I just don't think you can get better in that time frame. So, you know, I think our kids have always been um, prepared at the end of the year. I think they've always been in really good shape. They've always, um, um, you know, had a lot of toughness. And I think it takes that at this time of year. You're going to, you know, we're fixing to run into some really good teams in our own tournament. Then you're going to run into some really good teams in the next one. So you better have it. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Praise the Lord and go dogs. Thank you all.